Okay, we're gonna jump on to the next part of uh, today, which is a little more vocabulary. So I'm gonna share screen. Sure. Okay, so here's what we got. Next question. The University Statistics Department is conducting a series of randomized comparative experiments. Okay, so first thing, randomized comparative experiments means that you're gonna have at least two different things that you're trying to compare. It could be doing nothing to doing something. It could be two different medical treatments. But when you're doing randomized compared, basically the big deal on that one is um, your groups can be of varying size. Really, the, the treatment you get is truly random. So if I had 100 people, and it would literally be the equivalent of heads, you get this treatment, tails, you get the other treatment. And if you think about it, when I flip those coin, if I don't put any restrictions on the sizes of the groups, what ends up happening there is I could have missized groups. I could have 75 of one group and 25 of another group, for example. So that's the first piece. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to compare two different teaching methods. Response variables include students' final exam scores and the measure of their attitude towards statistics. Um, one study compares two levels of technology for large group lectures, a standard lecture where it's overhead projector and chalk, and multimedia where it's computers and videos and things like that. Uh, the experimental units in the study are the eight lecture sections in a basic statistics course taught by four different instructors as shown in the table below. And as you notice, every, every instructor teaches, um, teaches two, different, um, two, two different sections. So like, you know, Traum teaches section one and Traum teaches section six. So we have four teachers teaching two sections each. <laughs> so the first thing says, describe the experiment using a block to determine what, which lecture method is most effective. So block, block is when we're gonna, we're gonna break it into two separate groups based on some sort of factor or some idea that we believe is gonna influence it. So in this case, the really easy way on this one is we're gonna treat each teacher as a separate block. What we're gonna do is because teaching styles can vary. Train them, it could be, it could have been teaching this class for 25 years and, and been pretty solid in this. Uh, and Fosco could maybe be in their first year teaching it. So the teaching ability is something that we need to control for. So in this case, what I'd wanna do is I'd wanna block based on instructor. So basically what's gonna happen is I'm gonna block based on upon instructor. So what I mean is each instructor is going to be their own block. And if you think about it, Trainum is going to be, if you think about it, Trainum is going to be block one. Fosco is going to be block two. Lenard is going to be block three. And Rose, Rosalie is going to be block four. Okay, so now what's going to happen is I have separate blocks. And what I'm going to do is inside those blocks, I'm going to randomly assign one section to the traditional lecture and the other section to uh, the multimedia. So what will end up happening is you'll see this thing, the blocks are gonna be, so we're gonna have Trainim as a block. We're gonna have Fosco as a block. We're gonna have Lenard as a block. Lenard, I can spell. Lenard as a block. And we're going to have Rosalie as a block. So these are all my blocks. So block, block, block. Block. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to randomly assign. So what will happen is I'm going to do a random assign. And I'm going to assign one section to getting the multimedia and one section to getting the standard. Standard. Okay, so what's happening here is, um, God, my writing is terrible today, right into standard. And I'm going to do the same thing for each one of these. So multi standard multi standard multi standard okay so now the way i would do that is for example flip a coin heads it's going to be multimedia tails it, the tails it would be so heads we'll, we'll look at this one. we'll say that we have our two sections so we're going to say we're going to start with train them section one flip the coin heads okay they get multi section one is going to get Multimedia, which means automatically that section six is going to get standard. Then I repeat that process for Fosco, do the flipping of the coin. And when I go ahead and I flip that coin, let's say Fosco go ahead, goes ahead and gets uh, section two is multimedia and section eight is standard. I flip the coin again and Lenard gets section three as standard and section four is multimedia. 
And then last but not least, when Rosa Lee does it, I get section five and section seven. But I do it randomly and I describe, it has to be random. I can't just pick, I flip a coin. So now what's happened is each teacher is teaching each individual style. Now what's gonna happen is at the end of the semester, I'm gonna submit a survey. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at their exam scores. And I'm also gonna look at a survey that I'll put together that'll ask them their opinion. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare them side by side. I'm gonna see like, did train them have one class that did better? and one method versus the other? And did the students' opinions stronger in one method versus the other? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my comparison within blocks first. And then what I'm gonna do is after I do the block comparison, I'm gonna then take a step back and look overall. And we're gonna compare all the multimedias to each other, all the standards to each other. And the whole point of this is it allows me to make a true determination on you know, whether multimedia works better than standard overall, or if there's some kind of component based on the blocking of the teacher. Now, the last one, explain why the advantages of randomized block design over completely randomized design. In this case, um, this way, each teacher acts as their own control. What it basically means is, if I did a completely randomized design, what could have happened is that Trainum could have been teaching two multimedia sections, Fosco could have been teaching two multimedia sections, Lennard could have been too standard and Rosalie could have been too standard. And now, even though I'm comparing multimedia to standard, the teachers could influence the results. So this way I have the teachers acting as their own controls. Um, so that's just an example of some of the vocabulary of practice. Um, again, I always suggest watching the videos on AP Classroom and um, asking me questions in class. So hopefully that'll help. Uh, have a nice day.